Galatea, written by Theo McQuiggan, with art by Olivia Clark, performed by Michael Maximenko. I have forgotten what the sun feels like. Was it as warm as people say? Must I step out into the light? No, for the walls here are gray and windowless, but I still live. The room has been piled to the brim with my previous failures. I do my best to ignore them. I daintily step around the inner guts of all my computers scattered over the concrete floor. The poor things had to die for my quest. I'll make sure their sacrifice isn't in vain. Soon, my darling, I mumble. Soon you'll breathe. She is magnificent, built from nothing but the scraps I've found in my own determination. Now she's a towering monument of scientific ingenuity, an angel made of mismatched electric veins, shining steel skin, and heavenly LED lights affixed where lesser flesh beings have eyes. Her glow is all I've seen for weeks, and I love to bask within it. I readjust her new earrings, crafts it from the most dazzling of aluminum. My local Walmart must think I'm baking thousands of cookies with all the foil I bought. I smooth out every little crease I can. She deserves the best. I've tied the yellow wires upon her head in an approximation of hair. I spent hours yesterday painting every painstaking detail of her lovely face, the most shining marble white. The little gaps where I ran out of plating are unimportant. She's just as gorgeous when incomplete. Many have criticized my journey. It can't be done, they said. It's unnatural, they said. How wrong those Philistines all were. I've defied them. With every day she becomes more whole. It's taken failure after failure, misery after misery to get here, and it will all be worth it. I'll make the most perfect woman. One unrestrained by aging and death, or by human emotions like contempt and fickleness. She will be carved into utter flawlessness, and it will all be thanks to me. You will be wonderful, I say to her. A completely new intelligent species on Earth, created only by me. They'll see how wrong they were. Especially her. I drag my fingers down her steel cheek, skipping over the minor gap in the plating. You will love me in a way she never could. I solder the last wires together, sparks flying like lightning from Frankenstein's storm. Victory is so close I can almost taste it. Once the metal is melted to perfection, I make the last few checks. Yes, she is ready. My creation will take her first breath soon, and I shall be her god, and she will never leave. A cannibalized laptop feeds directly into her mechanical marvel of a brain. My fingers fly across the burning keys on automatic. I know the codes better than my own heartbeat. A few numbers, letters, and dashes, and I have crafted life. The gears whir as my code flows through her veins. Metal scrapes on metal, screeching that fills the whole room. It's music to my ears, angels singing of my glory. First, her fingers twitch one by one. The jolts travel upwards, slowly turning into proper movements. I stare into her glowing blue eyes, waiting with bated breath, and for the first time since I began this, since I dedicated myself to my perfect creation, she blinks. W where am I? Her voice is small and brittle, but oh, so melodious. 
You are alive, my dear, I say. Welcome to the world. Alive. She lifts her arm upwards, slowly turning it back and forth. Her cerulean eyes assess her perfect form with knowledge and ingenuity no human could hope to possess. My analysis has concluded that I am most likely a human. Oh, darling, you're so much more than human. No, not human, but my incredible creation. She blinks at me, head tilting slightly to the side. You made me? Yes, I did. I run my hands down her silver shoulders, tracing the exposed wires. I built you from nothing and brought you to life like only the all-powerful gods have done before. Are you one of these all-powerful gods, then? I grin, ear to ear. All my dreams are being realized at this moment. I'm better than a god, dear. God must be imbued with mythical powers to create man. I have no such powers. Only my own mind, yet I've created you. I gently caress her cheek. The warmth from her hardware almost feels like body heat. You are better than humans, faster, stronger, impervious to harm, unchanging and undying, superior to all. She cautiously brings her hand up to my face, copying my motion precisely. You are a human. Yes, unfortunately, that's what I was born as. But you made me, so you are a god too. Better than a god. Her fingers trail down my face, tangling in my overgrown beard. So you say you are greater than all powerful gods, certainly greater than your fellow man. Absolutely. My darling learns so quickly. I've made her so well. I see. In an imperceivable microsecond, the very hand I spent days crafting is crushing around my throat. I scrabble and flail and try to pry her off, but I can't. She won't move. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Then answer me this, my dear, she says. Voice too low, too wicked. Nothing like how I designed. Those same glorious eyes I use to gain upon now glare right through me, piercing my skin and stripping me down to nothing. Why are you so... She whispers as my vision goes fully black. Small, 